Hello, I am Federico Capas. I am professor of applied physics at Harvard University in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. The passion comes from also there is the hard work and so forth, uh, and it's something that uh, you need to uh, stimulate. One has to stimulate uh, your yourself. You know, passion in everything is something that does not necessarily last forever. So it has to be continued. You know, uh, fueled in a sense. Yeah, the impact certainly has been scientific uh, of what we have done, both in these artificial materials, that, you know, that led to the quantum cascade laser. You see, there I was, I said, if we can grow these atomic thin layers in any combination we want, then we can make new materials, which properties that are main man-made that cannot be made otherwise. And then eventually, at some point, something clicked uh, working with my postdocs and so forth, and sort of came the developing of this exciting laser that is commercially widely uh, available now. You know, there is the, I started and actually my first company in this, so definitely this was a commercial success also. The flat optics, the meta optics, the meta surfaces, I call to make these thin lenses. Then, of course, the uh, impact there will be uh, much larger, simply. I mean, again, it's, quite, it's not quite yet there in uh, what I said, and this, I have to be careful on what I say, actually, because a lot of things are proprietary about this, uh, what the company I started with my former student is, uh, is you know, certainly that is, uh, is going to be, I think it's a point uh, beyond return, basically, okay? It's going to revolutionize uh, Optical optics in the following sense, you see. Right now, uh, if you if you take your cell phone here, there are two technologies. There is a there, there is a sensor here, which is a silicon chip that's made by these big foundries that are in Taiwan, in Singapore, and so forth. TCMC, UMC, and so forth, right? And then if you take a camera module on top of the sensor chip, there is these lenses. These are plastic lenses which are curved, like traditional lenses. Instead of made of glass, they are plastic, and this is very important. Now we can make these uh, the lenses planar with the same technology that makes the silicon chip. So the same foundry will make the whole stack. This is technologically a revolution. You can still have a very important success, sometimes great, by not being in that category of actual genius, which is very sparsely populated, right? For so there, I think uh, temperament is uh, important. I think the ability to ultimately not, uh, it's passion, it's focus, and the fact of not being dis discouraged, because sometimes really discouraged and can set in, you know, in science you can go on sometimes for years, two or three years, nothing happens. I mean, when we started to try the quantum cascade laser, at some point, you know, I had a very bright uh, post of Jerome Feist, who is now a professor at the ETI, is one of the co-inventors of the quantum cascade laser. He had two months left. I said, what are we going to do here? You know, I said, oh my God, you know, I, I gave this project, nothing seems to happen. But then one more try and it worked, you know what I mean? And it's a very typical situation in science. So it needs a lot of temperament. I actually do not uh, overstress. Uh, I'm not a slave driver at, at, at all. I don't think that is ultimately uh, good, you know? I mean, I always tell the students, get a good sleep, you know, you are not impressing me by telling me that you have been working day and night and you didn't, that's actually stupid, I told once a student, I said, oh, you're getting tired, you're getting sick, no wonder, if you start, you know, coming in every night, 
you know, and so forth. So I try to I tell them that it's important to have a life outside also, you know. But I also tell them something. If you want to say, if your PhD is not your top, your number one priority in the years of uh, your PhD, then I don't think that's right. So it needs a level of dedication, you know, and I believe that is also true for research. And so it's not easy for a researcher to have a, a sort of sort of a balanced life. Uh,